Welcome to Story Chats at Inspi Romance. I'm Elizabeth Madry, and I'm here with my two co-hosts. I'm Narelle Atkins. I'm Valerie Comer. Today, if I can remember, we're going to talk about the amnesia trope. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. Um, we'll so, do it more than once, I'm sure. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so this one, I feel like, can be hard to write, um, but it also can make it super fun. Um, Cooney's done already? Don't be done already. You got to stay. <laughs> so um, do you do you two like the amnesia trope? What makes it a hit for you, Narelle? I do love this trope, okay. which is why it was easy for me to find a few books for this episode that I've talked about before because I do enjoy reading it. And I think... It works for me really well with rom-coms. I think amnesia and rom-coms are quite a nice combination because there can be a lot of humour that comes out of people not being able to remember stuff that's happened in the past. And I also like it when there's a unique twist on the trope because there are some things that have been done a lot that when that's twisted a little bit, that can be fun too. <laughs> there she goes. Valerie, what about you? Favourite, not a favourite, somewhere in the middle? I enjoy it um, most of the time. It's hard to get a fresh take on it, um, both as an author and to find it as a reader, but it can be really, it can be entertaining. And um, yeah, it's got its own pitfalls, I think. Yeah. So I would say for me, it is not a huge favorite. I'll read it, um, but I don't look for it. Um, and I, I had, I struggled because I, I did find some that I remember liking, but I remembered a lot more that I remembered not liking. So <laughs> for me, it's, um, it's not a favorite, uh, for me, but it's, I don't mind it. I'll read it if it's there, but I don't look for it. So yeah, same. I don't, I don't, well, I hunted for it for this episode for this. yeah <laughs> but uh otherwise yeah if it's part of a, a series or something then then I'm happy to roll along with it um I think one of the things I found that it's best with other supporting tropes it doesn't yeah. stand mm -hmm. alone really well it needs it yeah. needs some, something to lean on yeah um and when I researched for the one that I wrote I discovered that am amnesia really isn't well understood I mean it happens but not very often the way fiction portrays it right but what it kind of meant was that as an author you can do pretty much whatever you want and nobody can say that's not how amnesia works because right. it doesn't manifest oh, no right yeah. yeah so yeah. that's a pro and a con both I think um yeah. on that one yeah I would agree um is there anything you hate to see with amnesia like can't stand seeing Mm -mm. no I'm pretty good there's there's not I think uh, I think the same old same old okay. is probably the only thing that if an amnesia an amnesia trope needs to have some something unique or something interesting that means why is the amnesia a problem in the relationship between the hero and the heroine okay. and that's probably what I'm looking other. for yeah okay. but sometimes that can be superficial as well like I, I don't know if that makes sense it needs to be needs to go a bit deeper for me unless it's a really strong rom-com and then I will roll with it I guess there's you know it just occurred to me like it feels like amnesia often goes along with effectively second chance um yes mm. and it would be interesting to see something that didn't <laughs> Um, something where where the where they actually separated because of it yeah well or it didn't have anything to do with the other like person. like where now someone, my I mean, maybe wrong. I just need to write my own right but like maybe. the idea where um maybe they don't he doesn't want to pursue her because she's struggling with this amnesia and what if when she gets her memory back, she's this horrible, completely different person or something, you know, something or she like remembers that. the guy she really loved or something. Right. Like yeah. Um, I feel like mm. that could be interesting. Mm. Mm. This could be fun. So wheels are turning. Are you, <laughs> are you a fan of while you were sleeping? The movie? I love while you were sleeping, but that's yeah. not even like real amnesia. That's no amnesia because she lied. And so <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> want her lie to be exposed, but I still love the movie, but yeah. Um, yeah interesting 
All right. So um, any any other thoughts on amnesia before we dive into books? It's one of the few that seems to crop up as a married couple romance yeah. many times, not mm. always at all. Um, but it's one of the few ways where that can kind of work as actual romance yeah. in that it's it's a brand new chance for at least one of them. <laughs> So right. that, that's kind of odd. Like most of what I've got picked to talk about, should we be here long enough to get through my list? Um, isn't that, but but there is some. Yeah. Yep. I have one that is. But I, I think one. that's probably one of my favorite married couple tropes. Married couple can be tricky for me to like. I was going to say, but... I wonder if that's why I don't tend to, to love amnesia <laughs> is because I don't tend to love married couple romance although I will say if I was gonna read about a married couple struggling in their marriage I'd rather read about it because it's some external force like amnesia than like somebody cheated or you know all of these other like heartbreaking things that I'm just like I don't I don't want to read about that (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah all right let's talk books (laughs) uh Valerie you want to go first sure um this is one that I went hunting for on purpose looking for something for today so it seems like I should mention it it's (laughs) by Evangeline Kelly the prince's bewildered bride so we've got royalty is your supporting trope on this one uh Prince Edward and his wife Annette have been married for only three weeks oh and um, he had just, their staff had just uncovered evidence that she'd been having an affair Oops. so early in their marriage. But I mean, the royal, you, you know, sure. was she marrying him just because of the title kind of thing? Anyways, uh, at the beginning, her aunt is shot and is in a coma and Annette was bonked on the head and she can't remember anything conveniently. So they tell her that she's married to this handsome guy and she's like, wow, he is, he is really something and we must have been very happy together. And um, so she's finding him very charming and she's treating him as though he's charming, but he's not sure he can trust her sure. because mm. there was this evidence brought to his attention. Then she comes across something that seems incriminating as well on to her former self. And she wonders how it can be true because Edward is obviously amazing and surely she would have always been true to him. So she doesn't know whether she's um, regaining feelings for him or falling for him for the first time because she can't remember why everybody seems to think that there was something wrong between them. So it is kind of a weird setup and yet it kind of worked in that royalty amnesia sort of way (laughs) Mm. sounds really interesting it does yeah it it just felt like it was kind of the opposite of many amnesia books and yet I mean yeah on the bare facts it's not that different really kind of sorry Evangeline Um, (laughs) but but it was different yeah and the royalty part was probably part of it royalty makes it Mm. for sure yeah yeah Narelle what's your first one Well, my first one I've talked about before in probably April or May episodes, which is Amnesia on Nantucket by Tyron Daniels. So it's sweet, clean, but it it has such a fun setup with the honeymoon. So it's basically um, the the heroine goes parasailing on day three of their honeymoon. They're on Nantucket. She does something silly, ends up with a head injury and she loses five years of her life and she cannot remember her husband at all. (laughs) So, and I really, I really like these premises, particularly at that early stage of a honeymoon. Cause I mean, everyone has such expectations of a honeymoon being amazing and the best thing ever. And so when a honeymoon's ruined, that's always very interesting for me as well. So it was a real, it's a rom-com. There were some really funny moments in this book and it was just delightful to watch these characters basically get to know each other and fall in love again in the story. So they are newly married. So it's not like the full on angsty married trope. So it's a lighter take on that, but it's just a lot of, fun and if you're looking for something fun to read that um, will entertain you and if you like rom-coms then it's a good one excellent cool. okay 
So my first one is The One She Can't Forget by Tara Grace Erickson. That's on my list. <laughs> yesterday. Oh, excellent. Um, this is the second in her Minden Firefighters series. Um, I'm really enjoying her Firefighters series so far. So um, the couple sort of had a, a secret relationship, sort of enemies to love, sort of forbidden because there's some best friends in there. Uh, like she's his best friend's younger sister. And so they'd been dating and they hadn't told anybody about it. And so then when she is in a car accident um, at the end of book one, and then in book two wakes up with no memory, she doesn't remember that they were dating. She still thinks she hates him. Um, so it is. Um, and nobody it's, else knows and, that they were dating. He's right. And nobody, knows. Yeah, nobody knows they were dating. So he can't even show like that. He's devastated by this because he was ready to propose. He's so in love with her. Um, and his friends are like, why are you so bothered by this? You did, why are you, you still hanging out at the hospital? <laughs> yeah. Why so are there's you... no photos or anything? Like no, they didn't they take any it, selfies? Com- they kept it completely like hidden. So that makes it super fun because he's just lost. And she's like, why are you here? Go away. You are the last person I want helping me. And um, it's just really fun. Really fun. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. It's on my TBR. Excellent. (laughs) As it should be. As it should be. (laughs) Number two, Valerie. I'm going to go with Elizabeth Madry's So You Forgot to Love Me, uh, which is the final installment in the So You Want to Be a Billionaire series, which came out a couple of years ago, 2020, I want to say. Yeah. Sounds right. Something like that. that. Yeah. So it is the final book. And these books do, these stories do happen kind of concurrently. Um, however, if you love amnesia romance on its own, then I think you'll you'll still be able to figure out like the series premise. Um, here too, we have a, a situation where they've been dating their co-workers, Tyler and Danielle. He's planning a big proposal and she he like he knows she's gonna say yes, right? And then she's in an accident and her memories are gone. The big thing here is that her parents never approved of Tyler. So they are purposefully sabotaging her, what she thinks might be memories and trying to keep them apart. So um, why is it always the women who have these head injuries? <laughs> That's a good question. This is my, this is my, mo- my question of the moment actually. <laughs> Because, hmm. yeah, oh no, I've got one on my list that is the other way around. Okay, good. Um, but um, if you have read some of Beth's books and you haven't read the series, then go buy it or pay you it or whatever it, mm-hmm. um, because Tyler and Danielle's stories is worth the amnesia read and you won't forget it right away. <laughs> Take a while. <laughs> <Ba-dum-bum>. <laughs> <Bum-ba-dum>. <laughs> All right, Nirelle, what you got next? My next one is probably on your lists as well, which is Memory Lane by Becky Wade. Mm -hmm. So we had Becky on as a guest in the last couple of months. So go look for the episode to get more details on it. Um, And this is where it's switched, where it's a guy that has amnesia and it's not a married couple romance. So the setup is that he, there, she lives, I'll start with her. So her name's Remy and she's quite reclusive and she lives on an island off the coast of Maine, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, very remote from a whole lot of from services from the mainland and everything else and she sees this guy in the water and she ends up rescuing him and he has amnesia and she really is not interested in spending time with people she'd much rather be on her own for a whole bunch of reasons and she ends up having to help look after him and so a relationship forms from there and memory lane is just a fabulous story if you haven't read it go read it you're missing out if you haven't read this one and if you love the amnesia trope it is really really well done and I actually asked the questions to Becky I said what's the deal with the amnesia storyline and she gave a beautiful (laughs) answer in a lot of detail so if you're interested in amnesia and want to know what was going on in this particular story go listen to that episode but it was a great book and I really appreciated the way the amnesia 
storyline played out. Just loved it. Yeah, because it dribbled, the information kind of dribbled out in it and nobody knew anything at the beginning. So yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that is one, um, like like I was thinking at the, the beginning where again, they didn't know each other from Adam. So their relationship is, you know, burgeoning while he is dealing with this memory loss. So that's kind of fun. He yeah. doesn't know his name. She just gives him a name. Yeah. Because yeah, she has fun. to call him something. Right. Yeah. And you doesn't work too. <laughs> it's good for a couple hours after right. that. You need a name. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Uh, are we to me? We're to me, right? Sure. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Um, this is an oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> uh, second time around by Joanne Durgan. And I, it mean, is... I think that's the first one I read. That was. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, it might be for mine too. Uh, this is um, a married couple. So um, a little harder to read because you're like, especially if you've read up to that in the series and you've watched them like fall in love and get married. And now you're like, ah, um, so, but Mark and Natalie are newlyweds and she falls and loses her memory. Um, falls down the basement stairs. If I remember. Uh, yes, I believe so. Mm. Like, and he's, so he's beating himself up because I think they knew a board was loose and he just hadn't gotten to it kind of thing. Um, and it is a really great story of just like reclaiming and renewing their love when it seems like absolutely nothing is going to work. Um, Joanne's books are always very emotional. So like heartstring mm -hmm. pulling, like sometimes almost too much for me because I have a pretty low, low tolerance for like angst um but but always so well done it never feels like it's um put in there just for the sake of being in there it's always very you know natural and realistic but and solid this, Christian content yes yeah with absolute part. like you couldn't pull Jesus out of her books and still have a great story you would have no story left um which is again I love so um this was a great one but you probably will need tissues nearby for parts of it yeah <laughs> probably probably third one valerie i'm gonna go with jolene navarro's the texan surprise return which is a love inspired um and that i read when i was uh, preparing to write my own amnesia story um and this is one where it's it's the guy selena had been told her husband xavier was dead He'd been working for a security firm in Colombia. He'd been ambushed and kidnapped, lost his memory. Somehow somebody had traded his ID with somebody else mm -hmm. in that whole fiasco. And so she, the family had been informed that he was deceased. He, um, and he didn't know, of course, that he had left his wife with two-year-old triplet sons because this is Love Inspired and we have to have twins and triplets in those, right? <laughs> Upon his release, someone figured out who he really was and escorted him back to his Texas ranch where Selena is slightly shocked to find out he's alive and doesn't remember her. So he's working hard. He's told this is his wife. He's told these are his children, but he's like, I got nothing here. Wow. So, um, so that was a true second chance one again, but with the added thing of, you know, literally coming back from the dead. <laughs> well, and throwing kids in it is kind of harsh, like not just having to like remember your wife and your marriage, but the, these kids who are like, dad is not dead, but at, how old are they? They're like, two. And I'm okay. trying to mm. remember because I read, read this a couple of years ago. It seems as though she was pregnant when oh, wow. he died okay so okay it's, it's so then it's been long enough the kids don't know him they're okay. too young That's and probably weren't born yet but either one better than dealing with kid ptsd or you know whatever yeah, but, if you have like an eight or ten year old right yeah hello, that would be the whole story right there so much trauma there'd no, yeah there'd be no room for anything else <laughs> really yeah. yeah having known children of that age yeah norelle you got another one I do, but you're it's, you're right. There are no books that I've come across that have single mums or single dads of the amnesia trope, although it might exist. So someone, if any of our readers know about a story that has a single mum, single dad amnesia trope mix, let us know. 
Valerie you do. One. I haven't read that one. All right. Do you want to bounce to Valerie's book then? Yeah. Tell us, tell us about yours, Valerie, because I didn't put it on my list because I thought for sure. Ah, that- that's the one. <laughs> I haven't read that one. Off easy. Yeah. So the story there is that Nathaniel was planning to propose because that's what you do. And they had also been keeping their relationship a bit of a secret, but not quite as drastically as some of the ones we've talked about. Anyways, uh, she disappeared. She just flat out disappeared. He hunted for her everywhere. He called emergency rooms. He you know, talked to the police and nobody, 18 months have gone by and there has been no trace of her anywhere. So he's trying to get over her and move on. Uh, what happened is that she had discovered a secret. She had gone to confront her toxic mother with this secret that she had uncovered, found out she was pregnant, got hit by a bus, literally, or taxi, I think, and uh, lost her memories. And then her mom is like, you you didn't know who your baby's father was. You know, right. m- m- it must have been a really sad moment on your part, daughter. You shouldn't have done whatever it is you did there. So um, so she's trying, her mother has now passed away 18 months later, and she has this like under a year old child, and she's trying to figure out who the father is and why, what that devastating secret was that made her run in the first place. She's figured out she has some glimpses of memory of, of somebody saying terrible things, and she, she doesn't know who it was. She doesn't know if it was the baby's father, if it was somebody else. And so she's going back with fear and trepidation to her last known address yep. to try and figure it out. So yeah, that one. was my my take on it. Hmm. And and that one's nice because at least again the 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 baby's a baby, so it's not yes. as yeah, not as traumatic. As, right. Uh, yeah. Mm. Like yeah. yeah. Yeah, but so Daddy, he why finds out you that, remember me? He finds out he's <laughs> a father at the same time. He realized she doesn't remember him yeah really at all mm. so be a little be a little traumatic hey yeah <laughs> yeah but it's kind of that type of storyline is kind of a secret a twist on secret baby in a way as yes. well yes because i was, I was it's sacred parent <laughs> yeah 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 and Which that's what i said i think that amnesia really do, tends to do well with um mix it the supporting yeah. trope second yeah. chance I mean it's almost always a second chance but not quite like you said about memory lane isn't um mm. but it often is a second chance and and then yeah I thought secret baby sounded fun um because why it not is. it's not real life <laughs> <laughs> um and just yeah so many different angles that you could come at it from yeah but yeah. Um, but it seems like it needs something something to help hold it up and now I'm wondering why I didn't end up reading that book. I need to read that book. You do. It's really good. <laughs> I just, oh, I just, I because I jump around in series. This is why. This is why you shouldn't do what I do and jump around in series. It's why you because you end up, <laughs> you end up missing good books. But yep. anyway, <laughs> what's your next one, Narelle? I think it's actually a book one in a series. You all should be very proud of me. <laughs> and this one I have. This one I have talked about a while ago, probably at least a year ago I talked about this one, and Beth may have talked about it as well, which is Remembering the Cowboy by Mandy Blake. That was my third one. <laughs> yes, yeah. I thought that might be on your list. Yep. And so this one we have Camille who has been, she's an attorney in Portland, Oregon. She's returning to Wyoming to visit her family and is in a car accident and ends up losing her memory and the first responder is Noah who's a cowboy and he also works as a firefighter and they have history from high school so she ends up spending time on his ranch and it's a really fun story I really like the way the amnesia trope um, sort of um, played out in the story but I'll let Beth add some more to this one since it's on your list excuse me one I Um, thought you guys would talk about so I didn't put it on my list (laughs) (laughs) um I I don't really like I I don't have a whole lot to add I liked the uh, without giving too much away you know um yeah there's a there's a little bit of um star-crossed lover going on in their history which is fun with the amnesia trope to to blend that idea you know or family more like family feud you know they're from from 
feuding families. So yeah. they're not, their families are not happy that they want to be together and they had broken them up um, before kind of thing. So, um, so amnesia makes that. The plot super, it would stick. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Amnesia makes that super fun um, to throw that in. Yeah. That's a good one. Wrong yeah. side of the tracks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you have more, Valerie? No, I had five on my list and we've uh, talked about them all. <laughs> you have more and you laughed because I had five. Yeah, I did. I did. I was, um, mm. since Narelle took my third one, I don't have any more. No, well, that was, I'm done as well with Excellent. amnesia. I, I mean, we got a good spread though. And there's, those are some mm. good, those are some good books. I want to read that Evangeline Kelly one. That sounds fun. Um, mm. I like Evangeline's books. So yes. yeah. This is part of a, a multi-author series. I okay. I didn't get the feeling that the books like were tied together okay. when I looked at the blurbs of the other ones. There was just some common the something bride. I think. Okay. Um, oh, and, oh, are um, they the um like Mandy has uh, the billionaire yes. bride the the bride series? Yeah. Okay. There, ah, there was another that. book in there that I had read and a first book by somebody was it Mandy's maybe I don't know. I didn't write it's that like five or six. Uh, I didn't write that down either, but I don't think that they depend on each other at all. No, I did not get the feeling I had missed anything. Yeah. If, if it's the series I'm thinking of, then, then they're all sort of standalones just tied together by the, the bride aspect of it. Yeah. So sort of thematic yeah. related as opposed to, yeah. Yes. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Final amnesia thoughts if I had any I can't remember <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> help it. exactly <laughs> all right well, I'm, okay. I'm happy to read more I do like amnesia but I like yeah particularly when there's a fun twist with a different trope yeah the way they mix yep. so much more fun in fiction than in real life yes oh, although gosh, I don't yes. know anyone I <laughs> haven't read it but the um there was that uh box set last year of like 80s movies retellings right yes and I think someone did the movie overboard as their retelling and so that there... would be amnesia probably yes okay so that interests me a little because I did love the movie overboard back in the day um Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell um it's, I it's read a few of those adorable in that they, box. I don't they remember. remade it I haven't watched the remake because I think they need to stop remaking movies from the eighties and just get new ideas. But, um, <laughs> here, have some of mine. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Thank you everyone for joining us today on story chats. Uh, let us know your thoughts. What about amnesia as a trope or what you've read? Um, what we missed, what we forgot about. Uh, <laughs> you can leave a comment on the Facebook page or on YouTube. And uh, while you're over on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. We will look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, don't forget to fall in love with a good book. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.